This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2024 Crossroads Hampton trailer. Okay, the uh, model number is 372FDB. Okay, so I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. So this is a on-demand water heater. So the thing you want to remember here is there's this, this switch right here you can turn it on and off. So if you ever can't get power up at the switch inside the trailer, that's the place to look, okay? We'll talk more about this when we get inside. And um, i show you the, the control pa panel for it. Um, you have TV signal out plus power here. If you wanted to put a TV there, of course, sliding door. You got outside speakers. Okay. <clears throat> Deep cycle marine battery with two um, LP tanks full. Okay. This is your these are your your dump valves here, of course, black and gray tank. Uh, this is your fresh water fill here. So the most common way to get water to the trailer, obviously, is a city water hookup. But if for some reason you don't have city water where you're going, you can pre-fill the fresh water tank and use the onboard pump to pump the water. More storage under here. Which is just your power cord. You get a 50 amp cord with it. Uh, and of course you get your cranks and your reducer for the cord. Reduce it from a 50 to a 30. And then again from a 30 to a 20. And of course that's your dump hose there. Okay, more valves here. Okay. It's raining. Try not to get the camera it's too wet, but it's not. I'm not succeeding. So you have two two toilets in here. So you have two black tank flushes here. Um, basically, the like it says on the sticker, always leave the valve open. The 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 black dump valve open when you turn on the water. So you're just going to hook those on here and turn it on and flush it out. This is your city water hook up here. And of course this is regular regular water. Tap water. And you have some hookups behind here for your for a campground cable, satellite, whatever you have. Okay? Let's work our way inside here. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We're not that wet, are we? Well, one second, please, while I wipe this off a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. Okay. So, let's see here. Here we have the control panel. Um, lights here. Um, I told you you have a water pump to pump water out of the fresh water tank. If you don't have city water, that's right here. That water pump is also used for um, to winterize the trailer. All right, you have your awning switch here. Never leave the awning out unattended. You have uh, three slide rooms here. Okay, and of course your levels here. Um, and of course you have your two thermostats here for the two different zones. They work like any other thermostat. You just hit the mode button to light it up, and you keep keep pushing until you get to the mode you want, and then select it. Down here, this is your power converter right here. So what this does is it converts AC to DC power. So you see you have regular 110 AC circuit breakers right here, and they're all labeled over here, of course. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here, and you got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled. Also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how, as long as you're plugged into shore power, it'll sense how much energy, energy your battery has up front on the tongue, and it'll always keep it charged. It'll just keep sending as many apps as necessary to keep it charged, okay? That's the power converter. Okay. So, remotes. This is the fireplace remote, and then you have your your TV remote here. This is all literature for for your um, you know all the components of the trailer. Of course you have a leaf that folds up here to extend it and you have storage underneath 
of that bench there. Even probably underneath the chairs also, yes. Okay. Recliners, kind of theater seats, and they're all powered, as you can see. Okay. This one also. You have a hide-a-bed here, so you, you're you going to pull the cushions right off the back, and then you'll grab it down here, fold it out, drop the legs, and you've got a really nice hide-a-bed. The TV is a Televator, <laughs> um, which, here's the switch for it right here, if you can see that. Goes up and down, just still out of the way. that and of course like I stated you have uh, your fireplace here which is a really good space heater and you can change the color of the crystals and the flame and all that sort of stuff okay it's a really good space heater your keys are hanging here on your faucet microwave works like any other microwave you have two speed vent in a light of course these I don't know if he's got the gas on but I'll just walk it through either way these you just basically the oven knobs you have four burners and then this one is for the oven so you go like this Oops. looks like he doesn't have the gas on so yes so um, it has to be plugged in and the gas has to be turned on but you're just going to turn it to, to light and you push it, it'll start clicking, it'll light, then you take you hold it for a few seconds, take your pressure off the knob, and you're all set. Same with the oven. Okay. Okay, your refrigerator. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, first of all, just so we know, let me let me find the there is a a, a device that holds these shut. The drawer and the door shut. It screws right in here. This works. This is a 110 AC compressor type refrigerator, like you'd see at home. Let me see if I can find that for you. The bottom line is, whenever whenever you're traveling, you want to screw this this piece in to keep the keep it from opening in transit and uh, you know breaking breaking uh, or denting the doors, which would be more likely to dent them. Alrighty. Well, that's awkward, isn't it? If I can't find them, I'll make sure that it's in here. I didn't prep this trailer, so I don't know where it's at. But it will be in here. Basically, you screw it right in here, and it's like a big black knob, and it covers covers this, this, and this, so these can't open when you're traveling. Okay? I'll make sure it's in here for you. I'm gonna be preoccupied with it now. Okay, so this, this right here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector, so it should always be green like it is. If not, get it serviced. It's obviously very important. Um, okay. That about covers it for this room. Let me just look. You have all kinds of light, too. I, I didn't turn them all on, but you have a lot of light. Okay. Okay, so as we move towards the back, we'll go into the bathroom here, the front bathroom. This is just a half bath. Um, let me find some light here. So this is the controller for your on-demand hot water. Right now, the switch is turned off and we're not plugged in right now, so. I can't light it up for you, but basically you have on and off right here. Then you have you can switch from Celsius to Fahrenheit right here, and uh, up and down with your temperatures. Usually at 115 to 120 ish uh, is what the temperature set to. Now, if for, right now it's not plugged in, so you're not, it's not going to work. Um, the trailer is not close to any power right now. But um, keep in mind that that if you're Let's say um, you turn on the hot water, nothing happens, it won't, doesn't light up. Um, 
there's this built-in safety that 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 will won't allow you to turn it on if there is no water supply. Let's say there's no water in the fresh water tank and the water pump switch is off. If if you have that situation, nothing will happen. The burner will not light. If you don't have um, city water hooked up, it will not light. So if there's no water available, the gas burner won't light. So keep that in mind. So, um, but once you remedy that, once you hook up the uh, the uh, the, uh, let's say the city water, you just turn it on the faucet to um, hot and it'll just automatically light and, and um, give you an end of supply of hot water. Okay, GFCI here, there'll be two or three of them in this trailer. Just remember every plug in the trailer is wired through a GFCI. The toilet is typical RV toilet, it sits over a gray tank, or excuse me, a black tank. That's why I showed you the, the dump valves and the the um, flush the flush hookup also so you have two black tanks and two flush flush tank tank flush hookup so um, the idea is when you get to the campground you put in a, this works for both tail it's the same procedure you put in a, a dose of chemical and then you step on the pedal and hold it down and put at least a gallon of water into the black tank along with the chemical you can use more water than a gallon but don't use less then it's all set you're ready to go it's a uh, if if you don't use chemical and water, it's considered using it dry, then it will be it'll get clogged up for sure. The smell will be terrible. So you always want to have chemical and water in there in each black tank. So in the toilet up in the uh, down at the other end of the trailer, you'll have the same thing. You'll have to put a dose of chemical and uh, at least a gallon of water in to start off with. All right. Okay. Also, you have power fan with a power vent up here, and that's what this is. This remote is. It opens and shuts the vent and it'll set the different speeds and the rotation, that sort of thing. Okay? Alrighty, so to the bedroom in the back bath. Okay, you have storage under here, but it just goes to that outside storage that I showed you with the power cord in it. You have TV hookups here, of course. Um, all the usual stuff. Here we have a washer dryer hookup. So it's prepped already for a washer dryer stackable or a combo. So um, if you ever want to add that, that's no problem. It's already got plumbing and power to it. The toilet is, is the same, same toilet. It sits over a black tank. So a dose of chemical and a gallon of water, at least a gallon of water. And uh, before you ever start using it, that's important. You also have the same exact same fan up here. Okay, two sinks, as you can see, shower, which works like any other shower, okay, and then storage, alrighty, a lot of storage here obviously, tons of storage, some of them aren't that deep, but this, this one for example, this wardrobe is, so yeah, alrighty, so I think that about covers it. Um, you have two air conditioners in here, or maybe even, let me look farther down here, maybe three. That's probably why it's a 50 amp system, I would guess. Um, so, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please uh, um, remember, you, you need to inspect your roof on a regular basis. The manufacturer states every 90 days, but you need to send somebody up there to look around, make sure there's been no damage done by road debris or by low branches or there's no ceiling that needs to be done up there. So you, you always want to keep after that. It should be part of your regular maintenance so you don't, so you don't damage your trailer by, uh, by not inspecting it, okay? Um, right now, this, is, this trailer is winterized, meaning it's filled with antifreeze, of course. So you have to dewinter, right, dewinterize it before you use it. Um, I'll find that that little knob that I'm, I'm I'm still kind of obsessed with is bouncing around in my head. I'll, I'll find out where it's at and put it in there for you. And make sure you always have that screwed in there so you don't dent your doors when you're traveling down the road, okay? Okay, thank you very much.